be talking about the glory of God. And uh, we had already established that the glory of God is the manifestation of the presence of God. Amen? But today, uh, I want to talk about the protocol of the presence of God. Because we say that the glory of God, it is the manifestation of the presence of God. And we spoke about the benefit of the presence of God. We talk about peace and protection and also the thing we can have in the presence of God. But today I want us to, to learn about the protocol. Can you say the protocol? protocol. Well, what is a protocol? This is from the what I'm talking about. I say the protocol of the presence of God. The protocol is the official procedure to accomplish something, especially in the States, or a legal process to, to achieve, to meet, or to accomplish. That's a procedure. That's a protocol. For instance, every single person who's an Australian citizen, you have the right to see the Prime Minister. You can see the Prime Minister if you're an Australian citizen. But even though you know, we all know he lives in Adelaide Street, I think, in Canberra, next to uh, the parliament. We all know he lives, you know his house. But you can't just go there. There is a protocol. There's a process. There's a procedure. There is a, a legal framework in place to meet with the Prime Minister. So the Bible teaches us that the presence of God is everywhere. Psalm 139 verse 7 says, Where can I flee from your presence? Where can I go from your spirit? Wherever, no matter where you go, the presence of God is there. You can go in China, God is in China, in America, God is in America, in Europe, right here in your home. Everywhere, God is omnipresent. He feels everything, all time, everywhere. But you see, just like a prime minister, you know his house, but you must also know the protocol. Yes, you know God is present, but for us to enjoy or experience the blessing of his presence, for us to experience what God is able to do, in order for us to be able to begin to see in our lives the ability of God in function, we have to encounter that God. We must be involved with that God. We must engage that God. Otherwise, you're going to be, you have the presence of God through the virtue of the Holy Spirit, but you are not enjoying the benefit of His presence because you do not know how to engage the presence of God or how to encounter the presence of God. And a lot of people, they are like that particular place whereby, just like Peter, you know, Peter received a word from Jesus in Matthew chapter 16. He said, Jesus, if it is you, bid me come. Jesus said, it is I come. He got out the boat, he started going to Jesus. When he came to Jesus, he started doubting. The Bible says, start sinking in the presence of Jesus. He was already in the presence, but it was a reality that's what contrary to the prophetic word you received. Because the prophetic word say, come and walk on water. The reality was, I'm sinking in the water. Right in the presence of Jesus. What did Peter do? The Bible said, Peter cried out. He said, Lord, save me. You see, we need to understand the protocol. You can be in the presence. Peter could, be, could have been there. He said, well, I'm in the presence of Jesus. He could have died being in the presence. Can you say, I must engage, I must, I must connect, I must, I must get involved. Must so we have to understand the protocol of the presence. Because you see, one thing I want us to understand is that God is a king. I read some scripture for us. In the book of uh, Psalm chapter 47, verse number 7, the Bible says, For God 
is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God is, can you say God is the king? God is the or can you say God is the king? God is the because king. God is the king. In the protocol of kings, kings don't come to you. You go to the king. Now, because we know that God is present, God has the ability to heal me. God has the ability to prosper me. God is, has the ability to bless me. God has the ability to change my circumstances. God is the ability to deliver me. Yet, He has that ability, but because God is a king, I have to go to God. If I don't go to Him, I will remain with my circumstances. I will remain bound. I will remain broke. I will remain confused. I will remain in a place where I am wondering why. Because I know it's real, but not encountering Him. I am not getting myself into the process, into the procedure, into the protocol that it takes to encounter the God of my blessing. I want God to use me. God will release your anointing. But for God to release the anointing, say you have to come. Look what the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 3. It says, Therefore say to them, that says the Lord of hosts, return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Notice that God knew that there was a need for them to return. Because during this particular time they were going to the time of crisis and they were wondering you know we are sowing we are not reaping there's trouble everywhere God knew they were sin in the land even though he had the power to forgive to cleanse to pave a way for them he made an invitation said you know I want you to return to me and then I'll return to you so when you return I return with me then you are going to receive your provision can you say I'll return I'll say I'll return, return. I'll in Malachi chapter 3 verse 7 the Bible says you yet from the days of your fathers you have gone astray from ordinances and have not kept them return to me and I will return to you said the Lord of hosts but you say in what way shall we return? Here again, during the time of Malachi, I remember they were also wondering. They said, We are sowing, we are not reaping, we are putting money in pocket with the holes, we are covering, we are not warm. What is going on? And now God said, The prophet Malachi he said to them, Return to me. Can you say, Return? He said, return to me, then I will return to you. Even though God had the ability to meet their need, even though God had the ability to bless them, but they had to return. Can you say return? Return. In James chapter 4 verse 8, the Bible says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. I want to know this. God wants to be close to his people. God wants to be near his people. By the opening of an invitation and making an appeal, God said, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. So you see, you the one who have to take initiative. You the one who have to say, you know what? This year, not only I want to know the presence of God, but I want to experience what the presence of God can do. This year, not only I want to learn about the ability of God, the power of God, but I want to see what the power of God can do. Not only I want to be the place like Bethesda, where there is a water with the healing, there is a water with the glory, there is a water with the anointing, but I myself want to get involved with this water so healing can flow to my finances. Flow to my family. Flow to my ministry. Can you say I will engage? I will Some people can, until we engage, we will never experience what God is able to do. Yet everything you desire is in the presence of God. But remember, God is a king and the protocol of king, you go to the king. It this reminds me of the two prostitutes. Remember, they had a baby and one of them stole the baby because she slept on the baby and the baby died. So at the, they, they had a dilemma, they had a problem, just like you and I. We have issues. There are a lot of things in our lives are dead. Some of us' emotions are dead. Our families are dead. Our uh, churches are dead. Everything is dead. And we are wondering, but these two women, they were smart enough. They said, we have a king in the nation. And the king should have the solution for my nation. Notice, they had the solution for our problem. But yes, they had a problem. Yes, they deal with the dilemma. But there's no way for 
the king to come, guess what? They went to Solomon. Can you say, I will go to the king? Say, I will go to the king. So I want you to know, people of God, I don't know what you are going through, but we are going to Jesus. I don't know the change of life. We are going to go to him. Jesus said to us in Matthew 11, 28, come to me. Can you say, we're going? Say, we're going. Come to me. Say, come to me, all of you weary, heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me. For my burden is, my yoke is in my, my yoke is in my burden. Is light. So Jesus is giving an invitation. He said, I can give you peace, I can give you joy, but I want you to come. Can you say we're going? We're going. Uh, yes, the presence of God is here, but we need to connect. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you would die right in front of the presence of God. Otherwise, you remain the same. You say, well, I know God is with me. Yeah, Peter knew Jesus was there. But I had to cry out, Jesus, save me. Then he reached out. I always wonder, why if Peter was just there, standing there, saying, I know Jesus spoke to me, come out of the water at the right time. He would have drowned in the presence of Jesus. He, he would have been buried right there. Mm. Mm. Yes, the presence here, but I need to engage. I need to connect. Yes, the presence in your house, but you need to connect. You need to engage. So, I want us to look at today, people of God, the protocol of the presence, the procedure. Now, I want to connect with the presence. Can you say, I want to connect? I want to connect. Want to connect. Because you see, people of God, if you begin to look at your life in the light of the presence of God, it will change your perspective. I said it will change your perspective. Amen. You begin to say yourself, hmm, now, this can't be. Because you see, we look at our life through the lenses of our experiences, education, uh, our abilities, what we're able to do, you know, when I, I get a job, you know, by paying me this much money, this amount, then I can afford to get a mortgage, I can afford to buy this car. So we live from the perspective of our abilities. And this is what happened to the China Israel, like I was saying the other day, you know, they, they look at Goliath, they, they say, no, this guy is big, because they kept on comparing themselves to Goliath. But David they had a different perspective. When he came, he looked at Goliath, he did not compare himself to Goliath, he compared Goliath to God. He said, you know, I know Goliath is big to me, big to us, but I want to compare Goliath Goliath to the God of our covenant is a small boy oh, yes. and he's coming down. I want to tell you people that you have to look at your life through the lenses of the presence of God. You say to yourself, my God is too big. I can't be broke this long. <laughs> look as a neighbor, you've been broke way too long. I can't be lonely way this too much. I mean, it's too much. The lacking money is too much. Lacking this is too much. Church no growing is too much. Too. Can you say we need the presence? We need the presence. So we need to understand people of God to look at our lives, look at our churches, look at everything through the lenses of the presence. If I carry the presence of God, I was talking to a young man yesterday. I love him. Actually, I'm going to him He's in the U.S. Um, anyway. They all spoke to him. He's going to be the president of this country. And then they call him. He's going to be a governor. And all sorts of things. So we're just talking. And uh, you just see when someone is, is so encouraging. This person, he just looks at life through the prophetic word that was given to him. He said, the Lord spoke to me, and the president called me, and I, he said to me, the president, I met with the president, this and that. He said, everything is just happening, just like that. And everything was telling me of the Lord said, it's not a big deep, so I just believe, you know, the prophetic word you gave the other day, and it's another man of God confirmed, another man of God confirmed, and I'm going to be the president. I'm getting ready. I started already sending me some photos. Look what I'm doing in the country. Oh my God, I'm very shocked. Look at this. Look at that. You see, just looking at life to the land of who God is. God is able to do it. Amen. Say God is able to do it. God is able. Say God is able to do it. Is it does not matter what you are going through. God is able to do it for you. It does not matter what the challenges are. God is able to do it for you. In fact, God told us, I believe in Isaiah 45 verse 2, He said, I will walk 
before you yeah. and I'll make all the crooked way straight. Yeah. So all you have to do, you have to make sure you are just behind him. Yeah. You see, he said, I will teach you and I instruct you in the way you should go. Psalm 13 verse 8. So all you have to do, begin God said, turn left, you turn left. Even though you don't see anything, yeah. keep on going because yeah. where as you are going is making all the crooked way straight. Yeah. And God is able to do what? Exceedingly. Above, far above. Look at this neighbor. God is going to exceed your expectation. God is going to exceed it. You have to look at things from the perspective That's of the right. presence of God. Glory. So what is the first protocol, people of God? The first protocol of the presence of God is knowing the covenant. Can you say knowing the covenant? Knowing the covenant. You have to come to the place where you know the covenant and you understand the covenant. Because you see, when you're in a covenant with God, your life, the quality of your life is not predicated by the government, but by the covenant. Oh, I love that one. Look at that. Are the rims? Are they playing that? It was not. <laughs> uh, this might be the Holy Ghost. It's not predicated by the government, but by the covenant. Right. It's mean that I'm about to go around somebody, but I don't have this, I don't have that. But I'm in covenant with El Shaddai. And what is the covenant, people of God? The covenant, I say this in the past, just a quick one. The covenant, a covenant is an agreement. Mm. And then it's like a contract, but the, the difference is that a covenant is an is in the, a covenant is an agreement sealed with blood. So it's not like a contract because you can breach a contract and pay a fine. But a covenant, you can't just breach a covenant. You can't just break a covenant because for you to break a covenant or to walk out of the covenant. The only thing that qualify you from departure of the covenant is death. For instance, marriage is the covenant. Yeah. Normally, normally in a in a in a biblical con- concept, in a proper manner, we don't walk away from our marriages because a marriage is a covenant. So, if for that's why when we vow, we say until death do us part. But they are just we understand we live in a fallen world. Like Moses said, you know, the hardness of man's heart, divorce happens, things happen, separation happens. But in the mind of God, it was not like that. Because marriage is a covenant. So people got, I wanted to understand that uh, a covenant is an agreement, and this agreement is sealed with blood. Now, when it comes to the covenant, just be quick, because it, it's already on uh, YouTube, if you want to go watch everything I spoke about a covenant. Covenant, for you to have a covenant, you must have covenant representative a person who represents that particular covenant you must also have the terms and condition of the covenant you must also have beneficiaries of the covenant so the purpose of the covenant therefore is to share strength and to cover weaknesses let's say you are a farmer you if you're a farmer your strength is a land if I'm a, a, I'm a soldier, my strength is a weapon. So when we enter covenant, we exchange, we exchange our product. You give me a product of, of the land, your fruit, me, I give him a weapon. Meaning, from today on you, because you are so busy plowing the land, you don't have time to go and fight. So me, I'm so busy fighting, I don't have time to plow the land. So what about I happen now? When, when I'm hungry, you provide food for me. And when the time of war, I'm going to cut and fight for you. So we cover weaknesses and what we, we, we share strength. We cover weaknesses, we share strength. So in the covenant now, you have covenant beneficiaries. Can you say beneficiary? Beneficiary. It's me that, I'll give you an example again, we said it in the past. Example in the a mosaic covenant. Why? What is, uh, who is the representative? The representative of the mosaic covenant is Moses. Are you with me? The beneficiaries are the children of Israel. The terms and conditions are the Ten Commandments. So the one who represents that particular covenant is Moses. So it's to say, God does not really know you apart from Moses. 
You have a grievance, you have a complaint, you have anything you want to say, you come to Moses and Moses speaks to God. Because Moses represents what? That particular covenant. And when you obey Moses and you follow everything Moses said, and Moses instructed, you are able to do what? To enjoy the benefit of that covenant. If now you disobey Moses, you don't have follow what Moses said, it means that you disobey God, you are rebellion with God. That's why we see people like Korah, Dothan, and people like that were killed by God because they violated the covenant representative. So you and I now, under new, this new covenant, we must understand who is our covenant representative. Our covenant representative is... Jesus. Are you who? Jesus. Are you what? Jesus. Now Jesus is our covenant representative. I want you to know people of God, Jesus himself speaking, he said, I am what? The way, the truth, and the life. Nobody goes to the Father except through me. So if now we want to access the presence of God, we want to engage the presence of God, we must know the protocol. And the protocol of our covenant, the protocol is starting by understanding the covenant. And now our covenant representative is Jesus. So we must know Jesus, know this is a fable, a legend, someone who read in the books, but we must have a personal relationship with Jesus. Can you say, I want to know him? I say, I want to know him. You must know him by yourself. You must know him for yourself. So when Jesus came, just like the children of Israel, Moses came with a covenant of law, Jesus also came with a covenant of love. That's why I told you in the protocol of the covenant, kings don't go to their citizen. If you go to their, your citizen, you breach or you break the protocol. Are you with me? Kings don't go to the cities and if you do that, you break the protocol. And every time you break the protocol, you are going to die. Now Jesus came as a king, he broke the protocol. The reason he broke the protocol, because Jesus came, he was a minister of the covenant of love. And the Bible says there is no greater love, I believe in, in John chapter 14, verse 15, verse number 13. 13, he said this, there is greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. So Jesus loves us so much, under this particular covenant, he was prepared to break the protocol, knowing that he's going to die, he has accepted death, because he was operating on the covenant that said, a great a love, you need to lay down your life. I want you to know that Jesus died for you so you can have access to God. Amen. I want you to know that Jesus paid the price. You don't have to be ignorant of God. You don't have to be wondering where is this God. You can access God right here, right now. All you need to know, call on Jesus and when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are qualified recipient of the prayer of the presence. So you can enter the presence of God anytime, anywhere when you receive Jesus. Can you say I receive Jesus? Say I receive Jesus. People of God, I want us to understand there is no other way out there. The only way is through Jesus. I know people are preaching today, you know, there are many ways. I heard Oprah say, there are many ways. No, the Bible says there is only one way and that way is Jesus Christ. So Jesus broke the protocol for me. Amen. Jesus was willing to lay down his life for me. You know every time there is a pro, there is a breach of protocol, people have to die. This will remind me of the story of Esther and the king. Remember, Esther wanted to access the presence of the king. He said, I will go if I die, I die. But when she entered, because the story of Esther really is a love story between God and the church. When Esther entered the presence of the king, instead of the king commanding or ordering for a death, the Bible says she, he lifted the scepter. Can you say the scepter? And the scepter represents the cross. Meaning that we were unqualified to be in the presence of God. But Jesus came and died on the cross. He qualified us to be part of the presence of God. That's why the Bible says God has qualified us to be partakers of the heritage of the saints in the light. Can you say I'm qualified? I'm qualified. 
Psalm 45. You know, I was just wondering that, that day when Esther was getting ready to enter the place of the king because she made up her mind saying, if I die, I die. She knew she was going to die, but she went there and she just saw the scepter. Can you say the scepter is lifted? Say the scepter is lifted. And Jesus said, just as Moses lifted the scepter in the wilderness, so is the Son of Man will be lifted up. So Jesus is the scepter. Jesus paid the price for you. Jesus paid the price for me. So we can access the presence of God. Say, Lord, I thank you for Jesus. So, Lord, I thank you for Jesus. When you begin to understand what Jesus did for you, nobody will tell you, wake up and pray. When you begin to understand what Jesus did for you, nobody will tell you, come to church. Nobody will say to you, Papa, not offended because they say, you don't understand Jesus. Say, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. Like I told you the other day, you know, Billy Graham said, for God to become a man, is like a man becoming a worm. Mm, 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 mm. Think about it. For God, with all the glory he had to take on humanity, to become like us, is like you, human being, you become you become a worm. Now, did you tell me they come to tell you, Sally, there's so much Christ in the worm world. We want to choose you, you're gonna become a worm, serve them. I want to do it. <laughs> I'm not becoming a worm for nobody. <laughs> worm for what? No, they have Christ, no, they die. But G, when we don't look at that that way, you appreciate Jesus. Amen. No price is too big. I can drive for hours, my daughter. No price is too big. If he left glory to come on earth, no price too big. Can you say I embrace the protocol? And Jesus is my protocol. And Jesus is my protocol. Yeah, Jesus is your legal process. Legal procedure. When you have G, you have the Jesus, you give a life to him, you can talk to God. So the first protocol very quickly is what? What is the first protocol? Knowing the covenant. The covenant. Amen. Understanding the covenant. Someone's watching is like following. Amen. Glory to God. The first, the first this the first one is understanding knowing the, the covenant. The second one, second one is being aware of the presence of God. <laughs> you know, the things of God works with consciousness. Works with awareness. You, if you are not careful, you're going to be like Jacob. You pray God, if you give me food and give me this, and talk to the God you think is far off. Then he had a dream. Was it Genesis chapter 28? He woke up and said, Ah, God is here and you will not. So we have to come to the place whereby we begin to walk in the consciousness of the presence of God. In the consciousness of the reality of God. In the consciousness of the tangibility of the existence around us. It means this. Because I receive, you see, when you receive Jesus Christ, when you give a life to Jesus Christ, what happened? The Holy Spirit came to live on inside of you. So your body now became the temple of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? You became the ambassador of God. So everywhere you go now, you are you are God carrier. Amen. You see, when we begin to walk in the awareness of the presence of God, it changes our perspective. It changes everything we do because now it's no longer is Brata like there or no, or Sisalik is there or no. I'm living my life because I know God is always there. It, it affects you, you, everything you do. If I'm watching something, I know the Holy Spirit in me is watching. Yeah. Is the Holy Spirit going to watch the nudity? It is no. So it changes everything about you. Because now, you begin to take into consideration, I'm living with someone. Because what I want to address, it is a personality. It's a personality. It's a person. So I live with, you are living with someone with feelings. Someone with emotions. Someone can be grieved, can be quenched. Someone who talks. Someone who you are you are sharing your life with him. 
Are you with me? It changes everything you do. It changes where you go. It changes what you do. It changes what you say. It changes how you, you treat people. It changes everything. You can be by yourself in the bedroom. It changes how you are by yourself. You can be on yourself in the shower. You can be driving by yourself. It changes everything. About you. you can be on that plane. You can be in China. You can be in Japan by yourself. It changes everything. Why? Because I know the Holy Spirit is on inside of me. Can you say I'm a carrier? I'm a carrier. Ah, this is the best message. But I bet you love this message. Amen. The carrier of the presence. I'm the carrier of the presence. Everywhere I go. I'm at school. If you're a student, I'm a carrier. I'm a workplace. I'm a carrier. Everywhere you go. It's like a pregnant woman. Like my mom was saying today. Give an example of pregnant woman. There'll never be the time if you're pregnant where you say, I'm so tired. I'm leaving my pregnancy. I'm going. Can you leave the pregnancy you go for a walk? Everywhere you go, you are pregnant. I've been privileged to see two of my daughters pregnant. All of them, they come here like this. <laughs> I saw them. All of them coming like this. I've never seen them. I said, no, Papa, I'm tired. It's so heavy today. I left it with my friends. And I just want to know. You carry your pregnancy everywhere. So that's the same with the presence of God. Everywhere you go, you, you carry the presence. And because you carry the presence, you need to understand also, all the benefits are connected to the presence. They are accessible everywhere. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's mean that if I carry the presence of God, my environment, my geographical environment is of no consequence. Mm. Mm. I can be in China, but my possibilities are not connected to what Chinese can offer, cannot offer. My possibility I connect to the God of my covenant. Amen. Because I carry the covenant. Amen. If nothing is impossible to this God, no matter where I go, every place my turn my food trade up on, that land becomes a land of possibility for me. Yeah. Even though they say, you know, in France, people don't prosper. In France, people don't get purpose. In France, it's so hard. When I get in France, I just prosper. I don't know why, because I carry the God of all possibilities. Yeah. He, God told it, he told, he told Jeremiah, he said, I'm the God of all flesh. He said, anything to a heart for me. He said, there is nothing impossible to God. Say there is nothing impossible to God. I don't know what you are going through, but it can be impossible to you. But impossibility is not God. Amen. I say impossibility is not God. Amen. I say impossibility is not God. So I want you to, when you are walking around, be aware. People are talking, oh no, you know, you know, you know. Sister Lynn, hey, it's so hard. It's so hard. Hey, this country. Hey, men's are hard. Oh. Hey, men's are hard. You say, no, who are you talking to? Because me, I'm a carrier. That's it. Yeah. I don't know to you. I don't know what you are carrying. You are carrying your uh, altars of your father's house. Altars of your mom. I don't know what you are carrying. But I'm a, yes, I'm a carrier. I carry the presence of God. Oh. Therefore, I live in a realm of possibility. I live in a realm where God will just surprise me. He might take a while, but God will surprise me. Because He said to me already that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, the problem is when you are going you think nothing is happening because goodness and mercy they are behind you yeah. I say they are behind you oh. that's why you wonder about Papa don't say anything you don't have to say anything because they are coming behind you yeah. and the right time they pop in front of you oh, oh my god be aware be aware Amen. Amen. it changes you Amen. it changes you how you talk it changes you well, because you might be when you develop this awareness, you must start gossiping. And then you catch yourself, oh, I'm a carrier, Holy Spirit, sorry. I shouldn't be saying that. You, you, you say, I want to lie, I have a lie, you know, because you begin to realize, no, I carry the presence of God. You become sensitive. You know, this reminds me, a couple called me. Sometimes people get up, so Papa, you're telling people stories. You don't know what I'm talking to. I talk to a thousand people. I went there, it's a mix, mixed marriage. They're watching, so. And uh, I came there, I can just, you know, when couples, when they fight, 
I know my son and my daughter, they don't fight, so some of us will fight. Some of, <laughs> some, some of us, some of us are human beings, okay? Some of you are in heaven already, so we fight. I come to find a man that the lips glued, the lady lips glued, and then I came, we prayed, so it's an apostle. I didn't remember any strong Nigerian accent. It's an apostle. Your daughter is depriving you. He said, depriving me. So I call you to be a witness. So that when something happens, you should not blame you. You should not blame me. Hey. <clears throat> so he... Ah. So he said all these sort of things. And I was listening and listening. When he finished, I look at so the, the lady. Now this one is white, this one is black. It's also this man is the most selfish man I ever seen in my life. He doesn't care about me. He comes from work. He's on YouTube. No, don't worry, I'll delete that. He's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> a, he doesn't talk to me. Nothing. You know. Even when he's talking on the phone, he knows I'm, I'm asleep. He'll be talking to his people. Their are is yelling. Is yelling? And he that is insensitive. And then he will do all that. He will talk to his friend. And then he will never, never. He can't help with the children. Even like do the dishes or maybe something. So the children come to go to bed early. Never. But when he come to bed, then he everything should do. Then she, I remember she told him, he said, it will never happen. Never. Wow. <laughs> and then I meant to see Apostle. Right in your presence. <laughs> look, look what he's saying. Right in your presence, Apostle. You see what he's saying? You hear? You hear? And you know, Nigerian You hear, Apostle? You hear? You, you use your daughter? You hear? In your presence? Can you imagine what I go through me behind closed doors? <laughs> what did she say? Of course, you're acting like a jerk. I mean, no, 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 no. You see, the problem is. Here's the problem. Now, if you, the problem is this. Now, I encourage if you are a young couple, there's a book by Kelvin Lerman. Sex begins in the kitchen. That's good for you young couples, eh? You see, the point is this. I, I use this example because this man is a living with someone but he does not understand that when you live with a person a person needs more than just you paying bills yeah. she needs your attention yeah. she needs you getting involved she has feelings she has emotions she had she want to be touched she want this and that that's why you need to read Sex begins in the kitchen. If you are married, thank you very much. So, I mean, you are living with someone. And this is exactly what happens when you have the Holy Spirit. You need to understand you are living. With, can you say I'm living with someone? I'm living with someone. You have the Holy Spirit. You are living with someone. So, you can't just wake up. You know you are in covenant. You started these big businesses and then, then you are you are crushing then you come all this world, what do I do? What do you say? Wait, wait a minute. Just like in this particular relationship here, this marriage. You don't talk to me. You don't inform me. You don't let me know what's going on with your life. Now you're crashing. Now you find me. I have to be. No, it's not going to happen. So what I'm trying to tell people of God, we need to, to carry the Holy Spirit along or we need to allow me to carry us along in this life. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Tell him about what is going on? Tell him about, you need to understand, deal with the personality. He hears, he sees, he understands, he's smart, he has feelings, emotions. Like that you're living with someone. So you can't just come when you have your needs, you want your needs met. And that's the problem because we are not coming in the place of intimacy. We just want our need met. And what this, this woman was looking for, she was not there. She's a very wonderful woman, but she wanted intimacy. But what the men wanted, a need mm. met, which all the men do for some reason. All of us are just 
dumb, dumb, you know. <laughs> so we have to come to the place of intimacy. Holy, you wake up in the morning, Holy Spirit, thank you for this day. Just lead me, direct me, instruct me, show me the. I mean, we have to under, we have to, we have to develop an awareness. We have to allow the the fact that I'm carrying the Holy Spirit to impact our consciousness. That's the word. To begin to to be embedded in our mind, to be encrypted in our mind, to to be grafted. We must walk in the reality whereby the Holy Spirit is the premise of my decision. When I'm going there because I believe somehow is leading me there. You so I always say, you know, you are better off uh, making a mistake in honesty. And the Holy Spirit knows that, you know what, uh, Jimmy really thought he heard from me, but he missed it. And the Holy Spirit knows that your heart was in the right place, but you didn't just understand what you were saying. You tell him, talk about the Holy Spirit talking. So what I'm trying to tell the people of God, you need to know the Holy Spirit is always there. In the Hebrews 13 verse 5, it says, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. In the Matthew 28 verse 20, Jesus said, I will be with you till the end of the world. So what we need to do now, we have now to come to that place of consciousness that the Holy Spirit is here. When you, wanna, you go for a business interview, Say to yourself, the Holy Spirit is here. When you want to uh, partner with someone in business, say to yourself, the Holy Spirit is here. When you are laying a hand on someone to pray, don't begin to question. You just say, you receive your healing. Just say to yourself, the Holy Spirit is here. Whatever you do, walk with the awareness of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And when we come to that place, I'm telling you, your life begins to change. Because before, when I was young, I used to think of when the Lord bless, blesses me and I have a big church and I'll be comfortable. I'll go my car, I'll go my tithe and offering, and I'm a big boss. And <laughs> the Lord said, Oh, what about we break that off your mind first? Yeah. <laughs> you start a church, when the church takes up the whole God, said, No, move, move, leave that church. Say, No, God, is the time I need to suck the juice. Say, No, 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 leave it to your son. You come. Now you pay the price. When they start the blows on God, he said, No, no, go, 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 leave this boy. Ah! You see? So, we begin to understand. Then I begin to realize, you know what? My blessing is not tied to anybody but to God. Yeah. Mm. Oh. I got it. It's not tied to anybody to God. Let begin to come to that place. Begin to live knowing I have someone with me. It's like having a wife, even at home. You know? You even me, I sometimes all begin carried away on computer, and your wife might not tell you. I know my wife is she, she might not say anything. If I'm in an office somewhere, she just walks in, she goes. She'll come again, she walks for the thing, and she won't say anything, she's just looking for something. This is the office, what are you going to do here? She's telling you, it's too much. You own a computer, I'm here. Yourself, you just go, shut down, and click, and click, and click. You, you get out of the office. Why? Because we're living with someone. And I want us to really come to that place. I'm aware the Holy Spirit is here. Let's just stand up. You see, this one is no... What you feel is not predicated. It's not based on that. It's not anchored on your emotions, your feelings. It's based on what he said. Remember, he said, I will never leave you, no forsake you. He's there. You must say, but Holy Spirit, I, I'm not feeling you. You say, no, no. I did not consult with your feeling when I promised I'm going to be there. I'm there. I'm there to teach you, to help you, to remind you of the word of Jesus, to bless you, to heal you, to touch you, to restore you. I don't know about you, but you can even begin to exercise. Can you say, I'm going to exercise? Say, I'm going to exercise. Sometimes 
you just have to keep quiet and begin to 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 wrap your mind on that reality that Jesus is here that the Holy Spirit is here you might be in a home whereby maybe you are in a place whereby you are struggling to pay for this or you are struggling to to buy a house or you are trying to to clear this bill or you are struggling to to put this daughter of yours or your your son of yours into order the marriage the wife acting a certain way the the man is acting a certain way you just feel like your life your your home is just falling apart things might be falling apart on on the outside but they don't have to fall apart on the inside because the Holy Spirit is there you see today we can begin all of our that journey to say you know what I want to really to befriend the Holy Spirit Apostle Paul tells in Galatians chapter 5 I believe 16 he said walk in the Spirit do what? Walk. Can you say walk in the spirit? Walk in the spirit. Say walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. He said walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the works of the flesh. And if you, you study the word walk in English is where we get the word, we have the word sync. To be in sync, synchronized. It's mean that you know when the Holy Spirit moves and you you move. You are not going ahead of him, not behind him. In that the same Holy Spirit, a reality in the desert, in the wilderness. Remember when the cloud was moving during the day, they moved. The pillar of fire moved at night, they moved. I want you to make a decision today. Say, you know what? That's it. I'm through leading my own life. Listen. What the Holy Spirit has in mind for you is a person. What the Holy Spirit has in mind for me is beyond your wildest imagination. What you think is a blast, what you think is an opportunity, like letting go of this thing, you don't know what it means in my heart. Today I was just thinking, what? I've already planned, I've already... Which means that when the Holy Spirit tells you, let it go, it's because He has something much better for you than that. So today we are going to decide, Holy Spirit, all of us, say, Holy Spirit, I've grieved you way too much. Mm-hmm. I've overlooked, I knew you were speaking to me, I knew you told me, give this and give that, go there. I knew it was you speaking, I'm not just like whatever talk to my hand and I just come to the place whereby if I don't know necessary to work with my feelings but now and then the Holy Spirit can just blow your feeling at workplace I don't feel that that presence anymore we are going to say Holy Spirit forgive me let's begin again You know, when, whenever we come to the Holy Spirit, you come and say, Holy Spirit, I, I did this, and the Holy Spirit said, no, you're the one who left. I didn't go. I was always here waiting for you. It reminds me of the prodigal son. And what is shocking to me, the Bible says, when he just came, the father just took off, and you know, he gave him a cuddle, a hug, which means that every day the father was waking up looking around. He said, Maybe you're going to come back today. Maybe today be a day my son is coming back. And I can just feel the Holy Spirit sharing up in my spirit. He said, Thank you, Dynamic, because there are some of us here, some of you are going to be watching. You feel like you left the Holy Spirit somewhere in, I don't know if my brother can allow me to say, in Zimbabwe, Bulawayo. <laughs> Or in Mama in Burundi, 
or South Africa or Ghana or Nigeria, you feel that like I left all this way too far. And I have to catch up. You know, you don't have to catch up. The Holy Spirit is there. All the Holy Spirit, He wants you to say, Holy Spirit, please, I'm back. And you're going to just say, yes, I've been waiting for you. And I'm so happy that dynamic has reminded you. I met with my wife. We're talking over the phone all the time. Because when you love someone, sometimes we spend hours and hours and hours just talking and sharing and, you know, experiences and the word and prayer and just life. But when we begin to have children, we start having this and that, sometimes that life, if you're not careful, it begins to dwindle. It's the same thing. Remember the day you gave your life to Jesus. You were so excited. You want the whole world to know Jesus. The Holy Ghost. But some of us, with time, the Holy Spirit just has become, that's one of, just a, one of the concepts, you know, the Holy Spirit. Just a distant reality. But the Holy Spirit is here, is new. He's, he's kind of begging you. He said, please let's connect again. Let's connect again. You know, there are so many things at stake. We're in a nation whereby we need to see the hand of God. Look around you. Look at this church. We have such a marvelous building. We have offices everywhere, space everywhere. But you come every Sunday. I was I laughing my brother telling him, that's it. Where are your brothers? Where are your sisters? Where, where is everybody? Where is the church? So God, the Holy Spirit, is, is counting on you to connect with Him so we can bring fire in this church, shake this nation with the glory of God. Holy Spirit, once again we say, we come, forgive us for closing our ears and our hearts to what you are saying, we decide to come back. Carry us on the eagle's wings one more time. Forgive us of uh, a hardness of heart. Forgive us for being self-driven being led by ourselves, ignoring your leadership, your leading, your prompting, your tagging in our hearts. But we are bad today. Thank you for listening to this message. If you are blessed by what you just heard and wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your son Jesus Christ and that he died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life and I receive eternal life into my spirit and I am born again. Thank you Father in Jesus name. If you just said this prayer please reach out to us at kli.org.au or any of our social media platforms. God bless you.